I'm back with another video. Today we have Do You Know Who You Are? Bob Proctor. It was originally supposed to be one video, but my storage got full. So this is going to be the part two, and I'm pretty much going to let the video play and give my thoughts. Well, I'm going to try to. So on both screens, without further ado, let's get straight into the video. Because sometimes you got to interject. So I don't lose my thought. You went to, you attended seminars, and you said your reason there was to learn more about yourself. Yeah. I, my experience has been people attend seminars, especially self-development seminars, to look for the answer. They want to know, what is it out there I, I can learn so that I can be more successful? That wasn't your motivation? No. No, oddly enough. And I think probably you're right. I think that's what most people are looking for. I think they're looking for an answer outside of themselves, and they're never going to find it. Um, I think by this time I realized it was something in me. I uh, met a man here in Toronto. He was one that originally got me involved in studying this, Ray Stanford. And he told me if I didn't like the results I was getting in my life, mm -hmm. that I was going to have to change me because there were my results. And he said, if you're going to change you, you're going to have to find out something about yourself. Ah. And that seemed to make sense. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think it was an earth-shattering idea. It wouldn't give anybody a brain hernia, but it made a hell of a lot of sense to me. So I started to study myself. I found most people don't know who they are. They really don't. What do you mean? I mean, I know my name, I know my age, I know where yeah, I live. Yeah, that's not what you, though. You know, that, that, that's know just size, that. If you ask the that? average person who they are, they'll give you their name. They'll say, I'm Bob Proctor, but I'm not. Bob and Proctor are two words. My parents give them to me. They're called names, but it's not me. It's my name. Then somebody will say, well, this is me, but this isn't me either. It's my body. Like, you never phone down here to the, to the studio and say, body won't be in today, it's sick. Okay. You know, we don't say, am hand or am leg. It's my hand, my leg, my body, my name. Who am I? Well, that's an interesting question. Mm -hmm. And I believe if a person will start to study that and look for the answer, they'll find it. See, I think we live simultaneously on three planes of understanding. We're okay. spiritual creatures, we have an intellect, and we live in physical bodies. Okay. But because we lack awareness or understanding of who we are, we're totally locked into a physical world, and we let things outside of us control us. 95% of the population are reacting to life. They're not really living at all. Okay, and would you call that one of the barriers to success? Oh, there's no question about it. I think there's two barriers. Six I lied, but not. It's real. We, we just react until what's going on. We see everybody doing a job. Yeah, you learn the skill necessary for you to be qualified for this title of your job description, whatever you do. But don't nobody know what they're doing? I realized it. We used to have this thing. When you look at somebody older, you look up to them, your elder or whatever. You think they're supposed to be more wise than they're supposed to know. Some of the most, some of the most dumb, deaf, and blind people. After all, we coming up and having to fix what they didn't correct or they weren't brave enough to actually try to you got the Emma Teal stories they just let that man grab and they ain't bled about that would have bled somebody about that but so it's like due to them being due to them complete pitulate into the system now we picking up the scraps and got to try to fix it with the next gen and currently due to their inadequacies but I see that like Everybody just reacting. Don't nobody know what they're doing. When I say everybody, that doesn't mean every single solitary person. I mean the generalized statement, the generalized fact. It's always been people on the outskirts. I'm one of them. The generalized statement, in fact, never applied to me. I don't agree with none of this, but something going on. And I mean, yeah, up to this point, again, I don't believe in age because I don't want to placebo manifest, materialize, and actualize everything that pertains to age. And, I was born one time that's it i don't i even forgot my birth i'm proud of that i forgot but if we going off of this gregorian calendar i would be deemed 26 um i don't i don't celebrate it i don't acknowledge it i don't think about it but that always seemed to be an icebreaker when you talking to someone or a female or something that, that's just not in my realm of things it's not in my my, I literally forgot. I promise you, I was gonna say twenty five. Like I literally forgot. But yeah, up to this point, me learning all I know, I had to do a lot of introspection. I had to look in the mirror and see what was reflecting. I had to, you know, what Michael Jackson say, 
you're trying to change everybody else you got things wrong with yourself how, all you can do is start off in the mirror and change that and then bigger than that is your household and if everybody do that everything will get you indirectly be helping everyone out as well but up to this point of being 26 on this gregorian calendar all my life i've been existing not living everybody been getting it guess i'm just not as driven at least so it seemed um but let's continue because i see i want to let the video success is a funny explain. word nightingale had a great definition for it he said a person's successful if they know where they are and they know where they're going and they're progressively moving in that direction he said that success was the progressive realization of a worthy ideal anyone that has a goal and they're moving towards it they're successful <clears throat> most people think that you're successful if you have a lot of money quite often you have a lot of money if you're successful but it isn't i wouldn't say mother Teresa has a lot of money okay no, but she's a pretty successful lady so it's um, okay so that barrier to success well there's a, there's a couple react. of them okay i think there's two barriers one is our conditioning the conditioning that takes place in our subconscious mind from the time we're infants all we can do is act and talk like the people around us. That's why we learn the language we learned. If there was 10 languages spoken in our home, we'd learn 10 languages without any trouble. Hmm. There's usually one, and that's the only one we ever learn. And we grow older and we think, well, I couldn't learn another language. We could learn 100 if we wanted to. You can do anything. But I think we're conditioned. We have a, a real strong conditioning, usually with not some very good ideas. And then that that's the... the the barrier that's inside us, the one that's outside of us, is our environment. We have a tendency to act like everybody around us. And if you think about this, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Because if you study statistics, 95% of the people live their entire life and never live the way they want to live. Yeah. You know that 95% of the population in this country, let's say in North America, okay. the richest continent in the history of the world, they'll work productively, let's say for 40 of their 65 years. Okay and they'll end up with hardly any money. This now, why doesn't that surprise me, Mr. Bob Proctor? They to be the, they be the ones looking at us, what, uh, millennials and down the next gen, and saying, oh, y'all crazy, oh, that ain't realistic. Uh, the, the truth gonna hit you. You see them homeless people out in the street. I mean, that in itself is a fear tactic in itself. It plays in your conscious as well as your subconscious. So you like, man, I got to do this job because I don't want to end up like that. And you know everything else that pertain to that, the ramifications if you do end up in that situation. People going to look down on me. My internal dialogue, self-sabotage, going to look down on me as well. I'm going to be against myself. And it's just going to be a tornado, a locust swarm, a tsunami, and a volcano all at once. You see this, and you're going to placebo and manifest this reality for yourself, and it's going to be hard to get out of it. But yeah, they like... Because it's, 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 it's pushed on them, all these fear tactics or whatever. So it's like they push that on their kids too, whether they're aware of it or not. Most people didn't get to do shit in life. They didn't get to do nothing they wanted to do how they wanted to do it. I always say, it, say this. I really mean this. I know people get online, they get in character and all that. I be dead as fuck before I do what the, what the Dick Gregory's did. I told him not to go. Get your hand out my p I'll be dead as fuck. You can, I'll reincarnate with no recollection of my past life just to do it all over again and die a trillion times over and over and keep doing it before I <laughs> work at a job for a colonizer, from a colonizer just over broke and still can't afford shit, don't own my land, don't have a loyal title. Job is the finest public business for private dishonest gang. Why you think you making an honest living and somebody privately eating private parts gain it is honestly after your hard work and labor? I be damned. That'll never happen. Like, that'll never happen. In this dimension, the next realm, shadow realm, it'll never happen. So, yeah, when they, some of them, it do be out of tough love or whatever. They be like, because what was pushed on them and they seen it was real. They seen they, people go through it, others, or they once went through it and they was in a rut and it was hard. So now they compliant to the system and they just don't want you to end up in that. And they just want you to go and be obedient and sit down and act like everybody else and have a number. I be dead as fuck for that ever happen. Pick up my resonance. I'm not doing that in no dimension. So, um, 
excuse my language but let's continue i just so it get across like understand it and a lot of these kids and millennials feel the same way they're not doing it they're not doing it it didn't work for y'all y'all ain't get to do nothing you wanted to do you're not successful if you can't move your family out of hell damn even just me and my family shit and nobody especially if you're indigenous or aboriginal you should not be subjected to tenement buildings in the projects they chemically castrating you they chemically molesting you being your body is your sacred temple you think when someone take your goods they are worried you yes they did but they doing it in another way they're poisoning your food and you putting it in your sacred temple not knowing the ramifications of what these chemicals do to you everything has the opposite your equal reaction right and then they look at you a tight way when you ain't acting civilized or whatever and when they doing things that go against you you're chemically imbalanced you ain't probably even scratch the surface of your potential and brain capacity due to what they pushing on you so it's like i seen the dick gregory's and everybody of that generation and what they say and all that they ain't open-minded at all and just because that was y'all life doesn't mean it's ours and have to be ours what y'all say isn't universal law it don't govern shit and it didn't work for y'all before i'm clocking in every day i clock your ass out permanently let's continue gotta be something wrong so there's not much five percent of the people end up financially comfortable or independent are you trying to when you die you go to another life maybe heaven maybe purgatory maybe hell purgatory these are the it's stagnated it's, uh... no actually i think it's i think it's quite an exciting idea because you see the idea behind it is that anybody can win anyone at all but if we start studying these statistics, I think we'll arrive at the conclusion, geez, I better start thinking for myself rather than follow everybody. Most people, they get a job, they look around, they see how everybody else is doing their work, and they start doing it the same way. Mm -hmm. They should stop and think, I wonder if any of these people know what they're doing. <laughs> you know, is there a better way to do it? But don't we have a need to fit in? I mean, we don't want to, we don't want to stand out. We don't want to get fired. We don't want to make waves. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Just fall into line, you know, take a number, be like everybody around. <laughs> You know, that'd be great in the animal kingdom, I, but human beings aren't supposed to live that way. I think we should make a few waves. We yeah. should maybe stand out, be different. Not, not for the sake of being different, okay. but because we are different. We all think different thoughts. And I believe we should start to think and build images in our mind of what we'd like to do and then set out and do it. Okay, Emerson did that, Edison did that, Marconi did that, Samuel Morse did that. Uh, Buck Minister Fuller did that. We could go on and on and on. Okay. They were different. They stood out. They made a few waves. Okay. You started with, with you saying you, you started with a search for yourself to try to find out more about yourself. Mm -hmm. and, and, and you were somewhat successful along the way. Well, yeah. I didn't start it like that in the beginning. I started out of wondering a lot of money. I figured okay. if I had enough money, I was going to cure all my problems. I found that that wasn't true. I earned a fair amount of problems and, or money, and I seemed to have more problems. <laughs> but I, I, uh, after you know working at this for a few years i decided that you know the real answer is get to know yourself a little better okay and i don't think you have to go off in the himalayas and become a guru to okay to what, what did you do to learn about yourself you said you went around as many seminars i attended as seminars okay. i went and listened to different speakers who uh, taught something about the mind um, i think the answer is in our mind if we'll start studying and trying to understand our mind okay let me get we, let me get back to you if i can what did you learn about bob proctor during that study well I learned that the biggest part of me you'll never see. It's non-physical. And uh, what you see here in the physical body is nothing but the physical manifestation of the higher side of my personality. And of course, that's true with you and, you know, Nancy's on the camera. It's true of everyone. I like that. The biggest part of me you'll never see, which is true. The biggest part of me you will never understand, for it is my experience. For the highest knowledge is unutterable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcends our material words or symbols. Some things can be explained. It's not the matter if we don't have words. It's just unutterable. The highest form of knowledge. And we will say that's God. And when you know what I know, 
everything is composed of atoms atoms are aware and alive and conscious hell after all humans behave like photons when observed um, we have a collective conscious we have a collective unconscious so if it's an ocean you just get a cup of that water swirl it around a bit or whatever and that's you your own individual experience whatever but it's derivative from the same water as the source as above so below as within so without everything is alive and aware and conscious even this wall you think is stationary but if you look at it with a scope that can detect these things everything is energy vibrating at different frequencies after all you see less than one percent of the electromagnetic spectrum so when you know what I know, everything is alive. Everything is aware and conscious. Universe, galaxy, sun, anything you can think of is aware and is doing what it's designed to do. And it's doing more than you can see with the eye. Believe in half of what you see and half of what you hear. It's like everything is alive. Everything is God. Is basically what I'm saying. We're going to cut it there. So he said the biggest part of me you'll never see. It sounds like that's a God. After all, it was God's plural with the S. It wasn't singular. They introduced monotheism for control tactic. And that goes against my common sense and logic as well. So I'll, religion means to rely on the external source. I ain't giving nobody my goddamn power. I'm going to give me my power. And then I'm going to lend my power that can't be created nor destroyed to the ones that feel voiceless and that is in need at that particular point in time and moment. It may be times you're just out and about you walk and someone asks you for something someone that's less fortunate or whatever and you won't feel propelled to do such and such and then another time a whole nother person with a vibration it's like you feel something that tell you to do this for this individual not to say the other one that you didn't do it for it's not going to get it it's just probably supposed to be another person another day or what have you so but yeah that's what i'm going to use my power and energy for for self and to the ones i can't help out that's in need that's what I'm going to use mine for. I'm never going to give mine to some external source that they colonize and capitalist ancestors bestowed upon us. I don't trust nothing you give me. I, I, you're supposed to despise the free lunch, right? Look at it a type way. Yet, when you're born, they gave you a name, a race, and religion. I am not black. I am not dead. I am not void of color. In fact, I emanate all the colors in the rainbow, the spectrum, the chakras. And you try to turn that into a negative with some LGBTQ shit. Um, and I'm damn sure not African-American. That's two goddamn continents, which is still words. You know, I used to refer to names earlier. It's still words. Um, name, race, and religion. Yeah. So let's continue. <laughs> Um, and what we have to study, I think, is how does this non-physical part of my mind work? Um, what happens when I think? Where do thoughts come from? How was this chair built? Somebody had to think. Thoughts are everywhere. And we pull thoughts into our mind and we build pictures or images in our mind. Okay. What we there was a moment there where I really thought... I need an ad blocker. We want to understand is that's a non-physical side of ourself that's doing that if i can build an image of something in my mind i'm quite capable of building a physical replica of it in my world so if i build an image of me as a happy relaxed person i can live like that if i build an image of myself as being prosperous i can become prosperous so if we think rich we will be rich so Absolutely. We're already rich, just short of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those of us that like to acquire more money yeah. and or happiness or whatever we, we see success, uh, those of us that want to reach the goals that we've set for ourselves, yeah. we do it first by... Well, the first thing you do is sit down and decide what you want. If it's money you want, how much money? Lots of money. Well, nobody knows how much lots of is. Okay. So you've got I like that he said that. It's like you hear the shamans, the gurus, the philosophers of the past, or even currently. I never write it off. I take it all into account so it's somewhere stored until I get the other puzzle pieces necessary to map out this 
puzzle. But how I learn, I learn that you have to be specific. Ain't no such thing as I really. We're all and a part of the collective conscious as well as collective unconscious and um damn did I lose my point? I'm gonna lose my point. Let me see. Yeah, sit down and decide. Oh yeah, you have to be um specific. I learned that from my own experiences being I used to ask all the time. I don't know if it was the ancestors, uh not your God, I don't pray to your God, but just saying it out loud or even in my head as well. And like, yo, can you just show me what am I supposed to be doing? Uh, or I say what I want, but I ain't specific. So what I learned is you have to verbalize. So I, I do an affirmation. Like I allow myself to attract all things desirable. And then I will say it in my head. I just said it, but you didn't hear it. As if, what he was saying earlier, the biggest part of me you'll never see. The biggest part of me you'll never hear. You'll never know my real thoughts. But um, I allow myself to attract all things desirable. And then I say it there. And I see the imagery. I see it. It'll be like a time lapse, some kind of video recording where I would like to be idealistically. And I will try to conjure up the feelings, like the the corresponding feeling with what I see and what I want for thyself. And I feel like it'd be harder than me, hard for me to do that than almost everybody because by default, just walking around, I feel nothing. I think it's an Aquarius thing. It's not in a negative way. It's a very big positive that come with it that I enjoy more than the negatives that come with it. But it's like I feel nothing. So it's like you got to try to just grab this out of nowhere and feel something all of a sudden. Like, But it's like, so I say it out loud. So what a vibration, the energy, the frequency is permeating throughout. And I see it in my head as well. I think of the imagery with the corresponding feeling. And I'll just be very specific. Like I asked the universe, because before it wasn't working. It was never working. I was doing it for years. And then I say something like, okay, source and thyself. Because source is where everything stemmed from. And thyself is what got my best interest at heart. That's what me, that's my internal compass and map. And when I get lost, I didn't really been lost like in the middle of nowhere. And I'm just blind faith walking. I make it back home. 16 years old, not knowing what the, what the f I met. Like just got off on the bus on the wrong, completing, just walking. I made it back. Like thyself, so. I asked source and thyself, like, can you show me what I'm supposed to be doing? Can you make it easy? Hell, algebra is easy to some people and it's hard. It's hell to others. That was never working. So source and thyself, can you make it? Can you show me what I'm supposed to be doing? Can you make it easy for me in particular? to what is tailor made to me what is this easy it's the easiest thing for me to do it's as easy as me writing my name like can you make it where it's that easy for me to do and identify the signs you want me to see so i can pick it up and move forward where i'm supposed to be going so yeah you got to be specific don't say easy because easy is what to who it's hard to some people it's easy to some people say make it where it's tailor made to you to what i can't miss it What's the easiest thing in the world for me to do to know when I'm on track? So I see the signs. I see the 444s. I, I, I keep catching. I keep catching 1017. I keep catching 444 and the meaning of those numbers. I keep catching it. And it's different. Like, And again, I heard the philosopher's knowledge before. That was the puzzle piece I had stored in my mind somewhere. And then when it comes to my own trials and tribulations and errors and me just trying out different things and being very specific, it's like it adds to it that what they were saying is 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 right, is real. So just be very specific. Don't just say easy. Can you make it what's easy to me to why I can't miss it? It's not possible. It's the it's the easiest thing for me to do. Like whatever I'm supposed to be doing in life, or show me I'm on the right path, give me a sign. Like just make sure you verbalize that. Just make sure you verbalize that and be very specific and particulate with it. Like. That's what I always say. Can you make it where it's easy to me to what I pick up on it, where I can't miss a sign? 
Now I see a sign all the time, whether it's numbers, colors, or, and I can't miss it. I can't undermine it. Ever since I learned numerology, I add the numbers up. I can't not, not see this. I, I can't see it no different. I know if I'm selling something, the, the price of that eights. I, I, I know these things. Like I see things different. I see the colors. I see why am I drawn to these colors and human nature. And if it's McDonald's and it's Burger King right here, and I'm looking like, at the end, this, it's a thing you don't even know that you're doing, but they know that. That's why they you would think, why do they have them both on, have a McDonald's and a Burger King on the same block? Don't you think one is blocking the hustle like no because it's like a thing that you don't even think you're no you're gonna go to one of them for sure at that point so i observe these things i observe the numbers i when i see letters i see the number like a is one b is two c is three and then the meaning of what these numbers and the energies it i just see things totally different i never can just see numbers the same way i gotta add it up and and it makes so much sense like i know i'm everywhere here but let's continue what you want if it's money you want how much money specific money. well nobody knows how much lots of is okay. so you've got to be specific okay you write down I on a card got. exactly what you want and you carry that card around and read it often i got my car now this is what i learned in this book okay, think good. and grow rich and it's what i teach in the seminars i'll teach people how to set goals but you decide exactly what you want and then you start to think now you're going to have thoughts come to your mind of why you can't get it. Mm -hmm. you if you're looking to get a degree in IT or cybersecurity, UMGC is waiving their application fee through May 31st. You have the ability in your conscious mind to reject that idea, kick it out of your mind. Thinking of why you can't do something is never going to do you any good. And keep thinking until you start to think of thoughts of how you can do it. And yep. the way will be shown to you. It comes in the form of images in our mind. Think of how you can and not why you can't. Okay. So our first step is to That's set the some first goals. step. Right? Think about how we can go about reaching those goals. Exactly. And just think of how you can. Now, I'd say before you get into that, you should get a good book and start to study it. Select a person who is... That's funny he say that. It took me a long time to learn how to do this. Um... It took me a long ass time to do that and I've been knowing of this for like a good five six years now and I've been trying sometimes I put it off and not paying attention or I fall into the same cycle of things because I'm surrounded by the same energy I'm surrounded by the same environment when I go outside I see the same things I'm so not inspired I'm in the hood um, but it's like it took a lot it took years for me in particular it, it may be easy to you it may be harder to others it may take some longer but it took me probably like five six years and for me to if i think a negative thought sometimes i thought thoughts that were so random and sporadic like bro that's not even of my character at the end i had to distinguish between and learn that true aren't your thoughts so it's thoughts that pop up some good some negative you can sit there and entertain and daydream over the you can even sit there and daydream over negative thoughts. Y'all done had thoughts like that, that too. Like it's a video in your head of you just beating somebody ass that ain't even did nothing to you. Like it's like you waiting for something. Like, I done had that thoughts before. I'm like, but, and I just nowadays, it's like I this year, I finally mastered it. Like a negative recording, time lapse like video pop up in my head. I swipe over, you know, like how to host. Now nah, Instagram got your bitch. I'm, I'm swipe. I promise you, I'm, I'm swiping over. It's like I see a thought. I swipe over, and, and it, 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 it's like an algorithm. Like you know how you swipe over on TikTok and then go to the next video, and I see myself thinking something negative will pop up. And I ask the universe for that. I ask source and the universe, like, can you make it where I don't forget this? Where I don't need to remember to remember to what it's on autopilot to if i think of something negative that can go against my manifestation that you make me aware of i'm thinking of something i shouldn't be thinking of and, and swipe over so it's not every time it pop up i swipe over and then some of my thoughts it'd be positive i just daydream about it and i sit there and entertain it because after all if you see it you can achieve it it happened in some kind of universe that time have yet to catch up with 
like it happened you really see it like i didn't have real sensations real dreams of like of things i do want but i noticed that too it's like the people you gotta fix that when you see a negative thought and before sometimes i how i was before i would sit there and just fester on that negative thought it's like in a way you asking for that you like that took me a long time to do not to say it would take you a long time but it took me a long time and there's so much so many contributors to that again like if you're surrounded by the same things that contain the same energy if you don't move your room around if you don't clean up if you don't create space for yourself and move things out and move new things in if you don't change your environment if you don't change your thinking if you don't change what you eat and because after all you are what you eat people just think it be some you eat bologna or you a pig ha 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 and they say, no that's a real thing the energy the the energy that that scared animal felt before it was decapitated or whatever you ingest on top of everything else they're doing to our food people are being chemically castrated people are being chemically molested you're being r-worded it ain't got to be physical for somebody to r-word you know they going out their way without your knowledge and consent doing something to your food that will have ramifications and bad effects to you and you don't know it's not what you're consenting you were ingesting it and you will suffer of what they did to you like and then you wonder why people ain't in a right mind and people chemically imbalanced and people can't think and they act out they can't think they can't even reach their potential of brain capacity because the stuff you bestow upon them goes against and shrink their brain your brain should be fully developed by the age of 25 right it's people that's 50 and they brain still underdeveloped because of their whole life they haven't been eating according to their genetic make makeup they just been eating nothing but poison they never fast i know you know a lot of people that never fast ever in life never had a detox or you change on a body like but yeah that was very hard for me to do when it come to thinking a negative thought sometimes i sit there and just entertain it and just daydream on them now i don't do that swipe left good thought sit there and entertain it or whatever because that's what i want to actualize materialize and manifest for myself but I notice I was very specific. Can you make it, if anything negative pop up that I have a, a, a something that tell me like sit in the house automatic because I verbalized it as well as internally. It's like now I get all the signs of what I'm supposed to do. I hope everybody get to do that too. It's it's like no other. Let's continue though. Was already doing something that you'd like to do. Get to know that person. Mm -hmm. Go to the experts for advice. Don't ask the person next door, your mother, father, brother, or the guy that works beside you, because they don't necessarily know. There's no point in asking a person how to earn a lot of money if they're only earning 10000 a year. They don't know. If they knew they'd probably be earning a lot. It's like, don't fair. go to a sick doctor if you want to get healthy. Okay. So you find someone that you can go to for advice. Get a real good book and lock into that book and start to study it. Like, I've had this one that looks like a Bible, you know. Uh, but this is Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. I've been reading this thing now for 23 years. I'll probably read it for another 23 years. I get another good book that I brought over here today. It's called The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. Now, I'm not getting a commission for selling this. The author's dead now. He's been gone for a couple of years. So there's this 80-year-old dude I discovered who claims he's able to download information like Neo in the Matrix. And the but Dr. Joseph Murphy wrote this book, The Power of Your Subconscious Mind. And that's probably one of the best books that you're ever going to find because you're going to learn something about your mind when you read this book. Okay. Now, I read a lot of books. I've got probably a thousand books sitting in my den at home in my library. But the one that I carry, I carry it everywhere I go and I read it all the time is Think and Grow Rich. I never stop reading it. Now, where's the value for you to reread that and read well, it again? I mean, you must, you must know it well enough that... Uh, I think I could probably recite it verbatim. But the secret is, I once read in a book where it said, when you read a good book through... Mm -hmm. the second time you don't see something in it that you didn't see before you see something in yourself that wasn't there before you see when I read this I create a, a, a greater awareness let me just read you one line out of here two lines okay Hill said the missing link in all systems of education known to civilization today may be found in the failure of educational institutions to teach students how to organize and use knowledge after they acquire it 
He went on to say that we should understand the real meaning of the word educate. It's not going to a brick and mortar edifice for 25 years. Okay. That's gathering information. You'll probably develop your memory, but I would question how well you develop your mind. And I'm not against education because I encourage my children to go to school, as we know it. Now, he said the word education comes from the word educo. And he says it's derived from the Latin word educo, meaning to induce, to draw out, or to develop from within. An educated person is not necessarily one who has an abundance of general or specialized knowledge. An educated person is one who has so developed the faculties of their mind that they may acquire anything they want or its equivalent without violating the rights of others. An educated person is the one that knows how to go and get what they want out of life without being selfish. Oh. In sense, a researcher, somebody who, who, who knows what they're looking for and knows, that, knows how to go about finding Well, I think we should forever be involved in research because learning is a lifelong process. You never stop learning. Education means to draw from within. We're drawing on an infinite source. We've got deep reservoirs of talent and ability within us. We can learn to do anything. We have phenomenal powers. If we used our body like we used our mind, we'd probably just move our little finger. Okay. We don't, we don't exercise our oh, mind enough. No, no. But we're not taught to. Kids in school should be taught, before the school year ever starts, to sit down. They should be given a blank report card and get them to visualize the marks they want to get and write their own report card. This is before school starts, first week in school. And then the teacher should say, now, I want you just to concentrate on how to get that mark, and I don't want you to think of why you can't. And I want you to form the attitude that you're going to get it. Now, some people say that's not being realistic. That's being very realistic. That's following the success principles that go back 6,000 years in recorded history. That's how everything was accomplished. It's, that's not engaging in fantasy thinking. In Hell no. Thinking, in daydreaming, no. we talk about. No. Well, that's where all greatness comes from. Greatness comes from fantasy. I would imagine that when Edison first saw the light bulb, he was fantasizing. But he kept fantasizing, and he built it into a theory, and then he built it into an image, and then he built it into a fact. Yeah. I mean, yeah, ain't Edison the one that was stealing? It, it's light bulbs carved on hieroglyphs. He ain't invent nothing. And the first light bulb that was created is still on to this day. Why the hell did my light bulb just go out two weeks ago then? It's a whole nother distraction. Oh, I got to go and get some light bulbs, put some more money in a pocket, man. It's... Let's continue. When I was a kid, it was a fantasy to think of going to the moon. Mm -hmm. We've been up there with cars, playing golf. Okay, you, mentioned, you mentioned in terms of success principles, attitude, this business of attitude. Attitude, attitude. It takes in the way you think, the way you feel, and the way you act. I'd have a difficult time really uh, explaining attitude right just in a conversation. I use a board in the seminar, and uh, well, I did a, a, an attitude seminar last night. We spent three hours dealing with that one subject, you know, so to do it here in three minutes, I, haven't, I, I can do it. I haven't learned how yet. Okay. Let's put it that way. I, I recognize it's difficult because we talk. You have to have a winning attitude, though, Tom. Okay. In human relations, we talk about the toughest thing with managing people, the toughest thing to deal with is their attitude. That's right. That, that, that's almost impossible. And that's the one to thing where management falls down. But we can't change people's attitudes. Well, nobody can change another person's attitude. The only attitude we can change is our own. But you see, if management has the idea it's their attitude and we can't do anything about it, then they're not going to do anything about it. But if management arrive at the conclusion, yes, it is attitude, and let's teach the people something about attitude. Let's teach them something about themselves. Let's make them realize that they're worth something, that they're valuable, that the greatest resource we've got Companies spend about 65% of every dollar that comes in goes back out on employees and wages and benefits, and yet management knows less about employees than anything else. They know more about the gadgets and the widgets than they do about the people. Okay, so your suggestion is we develop a winning attitude. Absolutely. Can you define that for me, first of all? What is a winning attitude? Well, if we can understand, let me digress for a second. The whole universe operates by laws, and there's a law of opposites. It's called the law of polarity. Everything has its opposite. There's a right and a left side. Mm -hmm. There's a front and a back, an up and a down, a hot and a cold, positive and negative, okay. yang the yang. You know, well, you can think negative or you can think positive, but you can't think both at the same time. You're only going to think one way at the same at the one time. What the science is showing us is the universe appears to be alive. It appears to be conscious. No shit. 
and we have to train our mind to think or look for the positive or the good in things. There's good in everything. There's no such thing as no good. Car broke down on the way over to the station. There's something good about it. There's something good about it. Now, you may have to look to find out what it is. Okay. Yeah. But there's something good in everything. There has to be a positive and a negative for anything to exist. The law of, there's a law of gender that decrees that. Science understands it. It's taught in science. Okay. Well, once we understand that there's these, this law of opposites. Do you guys know that it's the ones you think you're supposed to take advice from and they fail? Are we picking up the scraps due to their inadequacies and them being pussy and not resisting enough and changing and learning enough and, and doing? Hold on, let me, let me grab my point again. I had a point. It's taught in science. Okay. Well, once we understand that there's these this law of opposites, there's negative... It's people out there that firmly believe in this these colonizers laws they broke all the laws and then they put them in place to protect everything they stole in genocide it's people that they, they know laws and don't know laws but they know what's bad or that can get me in trouble but they don't believe universal laws are real thing the universal laws govern you involuntarily whether you want them to or not they govern the elitist that's why they got these sacred grimoires and know how to I guess what transfer karma over and they know things they know esoteric knowledge and hidden occult things like most of these elders think the universal law isn't a real thing they just think these man-made laws are real that's insane and the, these laws are real let me know in the comic section let me know in the comment section if you you I know you know older people like that that sound like hoopla. It's fake to them. You can't prove it or show it to them. And no. But they they sure believe in these people laws as a collective. Therefore, they manifest it and it, and it actually give their laws some more power and them stand behind and playing it safe and not resistant to what they trying to impose on them. So these people out here really think the laws of the universe is hoopla. That's crazy, bro. Negative thoughts are positive thoughts. As the thought energy flows into our mind, we decide what we're going to think. A person's out of work. They can decide to think I can't find a job, but they can decide to think I can. If they're thinking I'm going to find one, then they'll start attracting a train of thought to them, figuring out how to find it. You really have to understand how your conscious and your subconscious mind works in relation to your body or your physical world to understand attitude. Attitude should be taught as a subject in school ahead of reading, writing, arithmetic, or anything else. Because it's a person's attitude that's going to determine the marks they get. Okay, and maybe part of attitude or related to attitude is this business of self-image, which you talked about. Yeah, well that would, like we were talking about success principles, and I was saying you've you got to get the winning attitude, you've got to set a goal. Then you have to work on self-image. Now, when we think we build images in our mind, Dr. Uh, Maxwell Maltz, discovered the self-image concept as we make sure your attitude is gratitude and your personality become your personal reality we know it today in 1960 he was a plastic surgeon and uh, he realized he, he was operating on people he may removed a, a you know a nasty scar from their face and he noticed sometimes when he removed the scar or maybe did a nose job on them or something, there was a great psychological change took place in the person. They st where they may have been introverted, they started to become very gregarious and outgoing. And he postulated that there must be two images that we have, an exterior image, and we also have an inner self-image. Mm -hmm. And he started to study this, and he wrote a magnificent book on it called Psycho-Cybernetics. Mm -hmm. And Psycho-Cybernetics, psycho being the mind, cybernetics being the science of control and communication, and he goes into this and he explains how every one of us has an image in our mind of ourself. And it's called a self-image. Too many people don't know much about themselves and so they don't have a very good image of themselves. And you'll often notice that people will shy away from you. They won't look you in the eye. They'll look down or look up. They'll never try to do anything of any great consequence because they don't think they can. They have a poor self-image. Okay. Part of that is because through school we're told about what well, we don't do well. We failed here, we had low grades, or that we could only be part got 60% yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah. I think that um, 
I think there's been a great disservice done with the IQ test in that respect when you're bringing out school. Uh, Benet, the Frenchman back around the turn of the century, invented the IQ test. Rule number three, you can't get rich slow. When I owned 100 houses, test, and then we brought it over from Stanford over here, and we'll test a person's intellect, and then we'll brand them good, bad, smart, not, and uh, that's not true. We can change IQs by changing self-images. Mm -hmm. But yes, if we're told we're not very good, you're just like your dad, you know, you're a bum, you're never going to do well, you didn't go to school, you can't win. Okay. Well, that's, all tr that's, that's all false. We can do anything, and we should be encouraging a child. Give him a pat on the back rather than a kick. Okay, what can we do? Members of, uh, of our, our, our viewing audience right now, they, most of us walk around with some degree of a self-image, is that fair to say? We all have a self-image. Okay, would you say most of us have a, have a negative self-image to some degree? Well. Let's say we can all improve our self-image. Okay. I don't care how good your image is, you can improve it. Okay, how can we improve it? Something specific. How can we go about making our self-image more positive? <coughs> well, again, you know, you're getting into a whole day seminar. If I could give you just a simple tip on it, if a person would sit down and let their body relax, totally relax, okay. and then start to visualize in their mind, see themselves the way they want to see themselves, which may take a, a good deal of thought since yeah, we're not well, sure. Well, you relax, yeah. I mean, I mean, in terms of how we want to see ourselves. Maybe we don't, we don't know where we, how we want to Relate it to something specific. Um, uh, somebody we admire, maybe? Or, possibly. Uh, somewhere we'd like to see ourselves down the road? Okay. Yeah. See how you'd like to live your life. See yourself living it that way. Okay. Now, understand that that's a picture in your mind. When you pick up a book, the book is nothing but a picture that an author has painted in words. Van Gogh, the great artist, was asked one time how he did such beautiful work. He said, I dream my painting, and then I paint my dream. They get the picture on the mind, hmm. and then paint it on the wall, or on the canvas. Well, if we would relax and build the image in our mind of how we'd like to see ourselves, mm -hmm. how we'd like to see ourselves acting in life, relating to other people, our social life, see ourselves in the position we hold, or how we make our sales presentations if we happen to be in selling or something, mm -hmm. and then take that picture and describe it, write it out in the present tense. I am so happy now that I see myself and write it out. Now, a lot of people will laugh at this and say, that doesn't make any sense. It makes a lot of sense. They can't tell you why it doesn't. I could spend hours telling you why it does, and I could explain it in such detail that everyone would understand it. But write out a description of how you'd like to see yourself. Start to read it, and read it, and read it, and read it every day. Carry it around and keep reading it. The one point that all the great teachers, all down through history, have all agreed on, they've been in complete unanimous agreement on it, we become what we think about. Now, it may be fantasy at first. It might even appear to us as being a lie. Mm -hmm. But if you read it often enough, you'll start to believe it. And when William James said, believe in your belief will create the fact, you will see the person's personality change. I watch people in the seminars, personality change right in front of my eyes. And all they're doing is starting to see themselves different. They're starting to think different thoughts. So our thoughts control our actions? Well, there's no question about it. No, our thoughts we control, control our feelings. Okay. Our feelings control our actions. Right. And we control our thoughts. Absolutely. Or we can control we our can thoughts. We can control our thoughts, yes. Generally, though, one of, our, uh, one of our, our difficulties, one of our problems maybe, is that we tend to react to, to, to oh, what other do. people tell us, and, and, and we consequently get the negative thoughts, and then that affects our feelings, and then that affects our behavior. That's right. That's exactly the way it is. We read the newspaper. Doom and gloom's coming. Mm -hmm. We just accept it. Doom and gloom doesn't have to be coming. Do you know there's always been a depression for some people? I grew up with the idea that everybody went broke in the 30s. They didn't. Some made millions. I thought everybody went out of business. They didn't. Some people went into business. There's always a depression for some people, and there's always good times for others. Let's ask ourselves when we read something in the paper, do I want to get emotionally involved in that idea? If it's a negative idea, I don't want to get emotionally involved with it. I don't read the paper. See, that's the key right there. The news propagate and propaganda they just show you things that make you fearful. You pay attention to it. You're drawn into it. You feel the emotion. You think thoughts. That signal go out into the collective conscious. 
And if enough of you think and feel those thoughts, they conjure your scarcity, your fear up, and use it for whatever, and then you will be more likely to actualize and manifest that reality on a grand scale, a collective scale. But you say you don't want it, but your emotions you feed and paying attention to it. You're paying with attention, time you can't get back. You're paying with your feelings and your emotions and your thoughts. And they conjuring it up. And they showing you things that they want to come about. And if you feed into it as a collective, the sooner it's to come about. That's why when they say, oh, slavery, physical slavery and all that can go into again. I already told you. With the little freedom you think you do have. I'd rather be dead as fuck before I work at a job all day just to not own the land, just to not be able to grow my own food and not to even own my seeds geo more or not. And for my kids to go to private schools, if you're lucky, and you still might not be so lucky, You, my daughter is in private school. Your daughter is in private school playing with private parts. You just don't know. And excuse my lingo from, from earlier. I just need to get that across. I'd rather be dead a billion times over and over. Keep dying before I do what the Dick Gregory's and people of his generation did. You failed. It's an ill. It's beneath me. Peasant, I never do it ever. No matter what. I don't care what I don't care what dimension I enter. I will never do that at all. I can't do nothing. I, I cannot do anything that make me feel like a slave and like a bitch. And like I'm conforming to people that can't even tell you where they come. I, I can't do it. I don't have it in me, and I'm glad I don't have it in me. It can't be installed. You know how they say everything, anything's possible, almost anything. That ain't possible. I'm not doing it. But let's continue. For that often, I do, but not. I don't dwell on it. You, you, you don't get emotionally involved in no. it when you see other. No. When an idea comes into your mind, whether somebody else tells you or whether you read it in the paper, we should reason with it. Ask ourselves: Will that idea help me get to where I want to go? If it won't, reject the idea. Okay. Right. I don't even Bob, watch I appreciate it. it. Our half hour has gone by already. Went fast. Very quickly. Those that are interested in learning more about, about your philosophy of success, and, and, the, and, and I know you do give very specific tips on what they can do to become more successful, are welcome to attend your seminars. Absolutely. Tell them to phone the office. We run seminars all the time. Terrific. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you very much for joining us. My pleasure, Tom. A shout out to uh, Mr. Bob Proctor. And again, excuse my language for earlier, but I need you to feel the vibration. I don't have. I just I just need you to feel that. I, I never would do that. And if you feel, oh, he think he better than me because I'm plugged in at a job, then that's you. That's how you perceive it. I'm talking about me personally. It's beneath me. I will never do it. So much I want to do. So much I want to do. I want to be a shaman. I want to still learn the thing to be a chiropractor so I can massage my future lady, the lucky lady of my future. And, I want to learn all the pressure points in the body so I can attack those. Even if I have to defend myself and literally attack those. So I want to grow my own food. I want to learn botany. I want to be competent and capable in every field and facet that matter and with my life skills and why I can govern and provide and protect mine. I'm talking about real provision, not going to collect some money and you got to pay for security to protect you if you a Jeff Bezos like archetype. Nah, I'm talking about the the starting new like I just want to do so much but it's like even if we weren't bombarded with all these distractions life is so short due to what we subjected to it's what make it shorter than it's like I still wouldn't have enough time so in order for me to have enough time I have to become an ascended master that's it for this video Hopefully you learned something. Don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, comment, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications, DM me the link via X, formerly known as Twitter. Let me know what you want me to react to next or what you want me to talk about. Follow me on Twitch, Kick and Rumble. Us versus them. I will see y'all in the next video, man. I'm out.